Clouds, clouds, and clouds coming up. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Bafiki. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where I create game development tutorials and from time to time I upload my short films. If you're interested, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In this video, we will have a quick look at Unity's volumetric clouds. It looks just great and it's pretty simple to set up and use. I use it a lot in my Unity short film, The Minervans. And by the way, my Unity Filmmaking 101 course will be out on 15th of June, which is less than a month from now. Please subscribe to my newsletter to get more updates and exclusive discounts. It's in the first link in the description. To set it up, make sure you're using Unity 2021 LTS or above. I'm using 2022 and the project has to be HDRP. So once you're in your scene and it's an HDRP project, to set it up, it's pretty simple. You go to your volume and you just add it from here. Add volumetric clouds. Just enable it from here and you should see it just working fine. In case you don't see it, you have to enable it from the graphic settings. So go to edit project settings and then HDRP global settings and enable volumetric clouds and then quality HDRP and the same thing volumetric clouds. Now you should see it working just fine. Let's have some fun with the parameters in here. We're not going to go in details. We're just going to go like barely scratching the surface. So first thing we want to enable the cloud control and the cloud preset. As you can see, there are three cloud control types, simple, advanced, and manual. These two are too advanced and too detailed. So we're just going to go with simple as it is um, basic and it almost has everything you need. So we're going to continue with simple and then cloud preset. We have sparse, then cloudy, and then overcast, stormy, and then custom. I'll go with cloudy and start playing around with it. First, we have density multiplier, which controls the density or how thick is the cloud. See if it's really dense. There's like almost no light is passing through it. But if the density is really low, you could see it's really brighter. I'm just going to leave it as is. And then we have the shape factor. This is basically the more we go, the less or the smaller the shape of the clouds is. So if we go to a lower number, you will see that it's really huge and it's go to an overcast or stormy look. Let's just put it back somewhere like that. These are average clouds, I think, and let's decrease the density. Then shape scale. If I increase it, you will see we have a lot of clouds. It's just like the noise map. The bigger the number, the bigger the noise map and the more clouds we will have. The smaller the number, the smaller the noise map and the less clouds we have. Let's go with something like that. And then we have the erosion factor, which is basically the uh, dissolve effect of the clouds. As you can see, if I decrease it, it looks bulky. It doesn't have a texture to it. So we increase it somewhere like that. And you will see it has a more depth or more texture, especially around the corners of it. Then we go to the bottom altitude and the altitude range. Basically, bottom altitude is how low is the clouds. If I decrease it, it will be pulled down. If I increase it, you will see that the clouds are really high. In the altitude range, it controls the size of the clouds. Then we have the earth curvature. By default, it's set to zero. And as you can see here, it says it controls the uh, distance at which the clouds intersect with the horizon. So if we increase it to one, it's like we have a smaller planet, smaller Earth. So they intersect with the horizon. If we put it back to zero, you can see its intersection with the horizon. For now, I'll just leave it at zero. Then we have the wind. If I enable them, you can see it says global or we can choose custom. If you choose custom, we can type whatever speed we want, but if it's global, we can't modify that. These values are being pulled from the visual environment. It has two parameters, global orientation and global speed. If I enable them, you'll see that clouds are moving slow. Let's increase it to something like 500. Now you see the clouds are moving. 
let's go with 1000 you can see it's moving from right to left if I want to change the rotation angle we can change the global orientation now it's coming towards us or we can just choose custom here and modify it but I'll leave it as global and then one cool thing we can use which is the shadows now if we activate the shadows you will see the contrast in the beautiful lighting it has on our environment and the cool thing about these clouds that they're actually affected by the light by the sun now let's take a look at another example where the clouds could be really useful just a reminder unity's spring sale is here there are a lot of assets with 50 to 70 percent discounts you can take advantage of this offer and see if you need any of the discounted assets these are affiliate links buying assets from these links will support the channel thanks and back to the tutorial as you can see here we have this spaceship flying in the air but it actually doesn't look like it's moving at all the camera movement is helping it a little bit to sell the illusion that it's moving but actually it is moving but it doesn't look like it's moving because it doesn't have any sort of um, layers or any nearby objects to indicate its movement let's add some clouds to give it more cinematic look and also at the same time to make it more believable that it's actually moving through space we're going to go to the volume and then add volumetric clouds enable it as you can see here the clouds are very far away and it doesn't feel immersive so in order to give it more local and more flying through the clouds look we're going to activate local clouds as you can see now it's already much much better so if i hit play now it's already much better than before but let's do some modifications and i'll do that live here i'm going to select the cloudy preset and then i'm going to play with the altitude to make it a little lower so we're flying through it and even play around with the shape factor to have thicker clouds I'm just going to enable and play around with these parameters to give a better look and at the same time solving some of the issues that we have at the moment that is so cinematic and which brings me back again to the announcement I'm releasing my course on 15th of June which is less than a month from now if you'd like to hear more updates about the course or about anything else I'm working on and some exclusive discounts please subscribe to the newsletter which is in the first link in the description below I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful let me know what you want me to cover next this is Omar Bafaki thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next one bye bye